Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Wasim here from the channel Handsome Smiles. Welcome to another video. Today I'll be doing the fourth episode of this mini series on my channel where I talk about great fragrances from a decade. So we started off talking about the 70s, then I did a video on the 80s, uh, then I did great fragrances from the 90s, which was episode three, previous episodes, this one. And today's episode, the fourth one, is talking about the noughties or the 2000s. So I'll be talking about great fragrances from the year 2000 to 2009. Um, as with the other videos in this series, it's not an extensive list. I'm not talking about every single great fragrance of that year, of that decade. I'm just talking about a select few which I consider to be great. Uh, and naturally, this list is going to be biased towards my own taste. So we've got quite a few fragrances to get through. Let's get started. The first fragrance we're going to be talking about, which was released in the year 2000, is Musk Ravageur from the house of uh, Frederick Mal. The nose behind this fragrance is Maurice Roussel, uh, who's a master perfume. He was behind so many other classic fragrances, uh, even cheap fragrances such as Nautica Voyage. So he's created a high end niche fragrance uh, uh, from Frederick Mal, but he's also created a cheapy fragrance for Nausicaa. Uh, he's been behind uh, Lalit Pour Homme, uh, uh, New Harlem as well from Bond Number no. 9. So he's a master perfumer who's been behind so many different fragrances. So Maurice Roussel's Musk Ravageur, I have to be honest, this is one of my absolute favorite fragrances of all time. I love wearing this when this gets cold. The opening is so interesting. It's a blast of clove and musk with a bit of uh, uh, sweetness like a, a orange peel sweetness in the opening along with that musk and clove the, the opening for some people can be quite challenging uh, but for myself i consider the opening just sublime i really love the interesting and quite the funky opening there's a uh, the warm uh, spiciness from the clove i believe there's a touch of cinnamon i'm sure in here as well along with that sort of muskiness in the opening. But as the fragrance develops, this becomes sweeter and sweeter and becomes a very cozy vanilla scent. Deep into the dry down, this just becomes a very, very pleasing vanilla scent. It loses the, the warm, spicy clove, the intensity of that clove in the opening, as well as the musk. And for some people, that is a little bit of a, uh, um, a negative, that the dry down is very pleasing because the opening is so bold. But the dry down for me, I've grown to just really love the dry down. It's just so pleasing. I love wearing this in the winter. You know, when it's very cold, you need something that just makes you feel warm and cozy. Uh, this one is it. Uh, this was uh, hype beyond belief in early Fragcom and for good reason. Uh, in terms of performance on my skin, I get around eight hours. Uh, projection is very strong for the first four to five hours. After it reaches that sweet vanilla stage in the dry down, that's when it becomes a little bit uh, more moderate and sit, sits a little bit closer to the skin. And it's in the dry down where I feel like many people consider this to be a great date fragrance. Uh, so yeah, starting off the video with Musk Ravageur from the house of uh, Frederick Marle. The next fragrance we're gonna be speaking about is Body Chorus from the house of Yves Saint Laurent or YSL. And the nose behind this fragrance is the master perfumer, one of my favorite perfumers, Anique Minado. So she's been behind obviously Body Chorus, but also other fragrances like Lolita Lampica or Masquilan. She's been behind Bode Argent from Christian Dior from their Le Privé collection. Um, she's been behind Jaipur Arm, among others. So, and she also helped Alberto Morias create Aqua de Gio, so a very prominent perfumer. So Body Chorus, um, this one is a fragrance which I wore a lot of when I was at university. It was like one of my signature fragrances. Um, again, similar to Frederick Marles' Musk Ravageur, this one was released in the year 2000. So how does this one smell? So very lucky to have the old bottle formulation. I'm not sure if there's any differences in the new formulation. The opening is very sweet. Uh, it has this smoky sweetness coming from the note of the benzoin. The benzoin is like a, a vanillic sort of uh, resin which gives off a smoky undertone. Along with that, you get um, the sweetness and the resinous that you get. You also get 
lack a coolness and this is coming from the note of the eucalyptus <sighs> really sweet warm cozy scent very very good for the winter months when it's cold and it's like Frederick Miles Muscarel Vigeau, it has this cozy sort of feel. Uh, this again is a fragrance which I consider to be very, very sexy. Um, this is a date fragrance for me as well because of how sexy and alluring it smells. It smells very, very alluring. It's not like date fragrances that kids wear these days. Like, I don't know, maybe they wear like something like Lamal Elixir or they wear like Versace's Eros. I've not tried these fragrances. But for me, this is like a proper dates fragrance. I think one of the reasons why I wore this a lot during university was because I saw a top 10 sexiest fragrances back in early days of Fratcom and someone had this uh, in their list. <laughs> so that's maybe one of the reasons why I bought it and why I wore it a lot at university. I just wanted to smell sexy. But the fragrance does smell very sexy. In terms of for performance, again, this is a really good perform on my skin i get around at least a solid eight hours with really good projection that's body chorus from the house of yves saint laurent released in the year 2000 okay next on the list is a fragrance from the house of ysl again and this one is m7 now i had the original bottle of m7 uh, this is like the repackaged really released uh, bottle called oud m7 oud absolute uh, which was released i believe in the 2010s in that decade but the original formula was released in 2002, which is why I've included it in this video. I mean, the new bottle is not a complete reformulation. It's not a complete new fragrance. The DNA is exactly the same. Like it's about 80% of the same fragrance that was in, released in 2002, which is why I've kept it in this video. So for M7, many people arguably say this is one of the very few first uh, oud fragrances from a western mainstream designer brand and at that time when this was released in 2002 the western audience was not uh, really used to the the note of oud and it was very very strange and m7 was actually discontinued because of very poor sales apparently from what i've read online uh, now obviously there's a huge craze for oud uh, I think namely because uh, of the Arab population in the in London, they just love Oud, buying up Oud fragrances in Harrods, which is why a lot of the, the brands are really going through the Oud craze. But M7, it was one of the very first Oud fragrances to be released in the designer game. So how does M7 smell? For me, obviously, I've worn natural Oud oils. So the Oud in this is quite uh, tame for my taste anyway. It's just this deep, rich, like tobacco-y, rosy oud note, uh, cherry tobacco sort of oud. There's gorgeous uh, like woods in here. Uh, it's very, very pleasing. It smells oriental, so it doesn't smell like a Western perfume. It smells like a uh, oriental perfume, but done very, very smoothly. The, the scent itself is very smooth. Don't think of this as being a like a one of those cheapy uh, Middle Eastern brands coming out with oud fragrances. This is on another level. This is uh, like if somebody, if a niche fragrance brand came out with a formula like this and this didn't exist, people would be going crazy and saying how amazing it is. Whilst this is like a designer release, it's truly a very beautiful uh, composition. In terms of performance, the original M7, uh, I've already done a review using the first ever batch of that fragrance, the first release. That one was a crazy performer on my skin. This Oud Absolute version, it lasts around six hours on my skin, sometimes pushing the seven to eight, depending on conditions. Projection is good for the first two hours after which it sits closer to the skin. So that's uh, M7 from the house of E7 Oran, released in 2002. Okay, moving on to a fragrance which was released in 2003 this one is from the house of Guerlain and this one is Abbey Rouge and this is the Eau de Parfum version so obviously the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Cologne was released in the 60s one of my absolute favorite fragrances and this is a Flanca a Eau de Parfum version and the Eau de Parfum version uh, was also uh, created by Jean-Paul Guerlain he's the 
I believe the fourth generation Gerlan, his great grandfather started the company. His father is very famous for creating the earlier uh, female classics like Shalimar, Mitsuko, Jiki, uh, a lot of those female classics his father was behind. But Jean Paul Gerlan was behind this one, on, along with Samsara, Heritage, and I believe also Vetiver. So, how does Habi Rouge or the Parfum smell? The opening is a blast of uh, sweet, candy-like lemon citruses. Uh, the lemon in this comes across like a, this uh, candy or sweet we get here in the UK called lemon sherbet. Uh, it's like a, a lemon type of candy with sugar all over it. And that's the sort of opening I get. I get a really candy-like, sugary uh, opening. Uh, it's very citrusy, very lemony and very candy-like. As the fragrance develops, it's joined by a gorgeous rose and there's a lot of vanilla and a bit of leather in this. It's a truly unique style of fragrance. It's a scent which smells super formal, uh, very, very unique. Uh, compared to the other toilet, this is deeper, richer, as you would imagine an other parfum to be. Uh, Performance-wise, they're both similar on my skin. Um, this one, I believe, is better suited to winter and autumn and maybe early spring when it's a little bit colder. Uh, and this one, I think, is best suited to, um, I would say, nighttime wear. And it can be worn formally, uh, nighttime, as in night out fragrance as well. It's not as versatile as the other toilet, obviously, but I think it can work in so many different occasions. So that's Habi Rouge or the Parfum. Uh, from the house of Guerlain, released in 2003. Okay, now let's move over to a fragrance which was released in 2004. This one is L'Instant de Guerlain, Burom, and this is the other toilette version. Uh, this is slightly overshadowed by uh, the other parfum version, or the L Extreme as it's known, that was released the year after. But this one was released in 2004, and I've got the perfume written here, Beatrice Piquet. Uh, she created this fragrance along with O Extreme, and unfortunately, she passed away. Uh, she was very highly regarded, and the perfumery, perfume world, the fragrance were really lost out a great talent. So let's stand the Guerlain Buram. How does this one smell? So this is a, a beautiful opening of juicy citruses, which then develop into a, a mix of cocoa and patchouli. Is a truly unique fragrance, uh, especially in the designer realm. We don't really get fragrances like this anymore. So unique, so interesting with the citruses, juicy citruses in opening. You get lime, you get orange, you get lemon, all these citruses, very juicy, but then it's joined by an amazing cocoa note. Uh, it's probably one of the best cocoa notes along with the citrus. When I first heard about this fragrance, I didn't think it would work, the citruses and the cocoa, but it really does. And then along with all of that is the patchouli. <sighs> Performance on my skin, had L'Instant de Guerlain Purom. It lasts around eight hours, uh, sometimes a little bit less, around seven to eight hours. Uh, projection is good for the first two hours, after which it sits a little bit closer to the skin. And due to it sitting closer to the skin, I think this is a um, more of a signature scent, uh, work office friendly sort of fragrance. It's a lot more versatile than the O Extreme version. The O Extreme version is very, very loud and I think that's best worn as a formal scent. Uh, this one is a lot more versatile. It can be worn formally uh, to the office. You can wear this uh, possibly even on a date. Uh, I would certainly. But yeah, that's uh, that's Santa Guerlain Puron from the house of Guerlain. Released in 2004. Okay, now let's move over to another fragrance which was released in 2004. This is from the house of L'Artisan Parfumer, and this one is called Timbuktu. So the note behind this fragrance is, uh, I've got it written here, if I can read my handwriting, Bertrand du Chaffaut, and there's another fragrance from that gentleman in this list as well, which we'll talk about. He's really a master perfumer. So how does Timbuktu smell? So Timbuktu is named after a city in Africa, Ah, and this is considered a niche brand, but very accessible, um, really clean, crisp, very well blended fragrance. Oh, the opening is just a beautiful note of mango. Uh, there's papyrus in here as well. Uh, there's a bit of incense and gorgeous vetiver as well. 
This is actually a very unique vetiver. It's not similar to the other vetivers like Guerlain's vetiver or Sycamore or anything like that. The mango in here and the incense really set this one apart. Uh, I don't f feel like many people talk about this one too much. I'm quite lucky in the fact that I've got a vintage bottle. Uh, I do need to wear this one a lot more and then do a full review, but because it's a vintage bottle, I'm I'm, I'm kind of avoid wearing this one too much because I heard that Lattes and Parfume, the newer bottles are horrendous in terms of formulation. But yeah, released in 2004, that's Timbuktu. Okay, now moving on uh, to 2004 again. And this is a, a classic fragrance created here in London in the UK. And this is Ormond Jane's Ormond Man. And the nose behind this fragrance is Geza Schoen, who's behind many of the fragrances from this brand. So Ormond Man, how does this one smell? Uh, I first knew about this fragrance from watching uh, Greg Boy uh, 76. So Greg's channel, he's really a massive fan of this one. He's, he really talks highly of this one, which is why I got myself a decant. And my first impressions of this weren't very good. I thought this was quite lackluster. I uh, didn't think it was anything special. And then I wore it once one day. Uh, I think Greg did a video the day before of some of his favorite fragrances and he had this one. So I thought, you know what, let me try that decant again. And I wore it to work and I was just blown away. It's one of the best uh, work fragrances out there. It's so gentlemanly, so classy. It feels like uh, James Bond would wear this fragrance. It's uh, a fragrance which you would characterize as a um, an English gent that's well dressed in a Savile Row suit. He would be wearing a fragrance like this. The opening is a beautiful blast of like pink pepper. There's some citruses in here as well. I believe there's the note of bergamot. Uh, pink pepper, as the fragrance develops, it becomes a little bit uh, drier and woodier on my skin. Uh, it's got the notes of cardamom in here as well. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of different sort of uh, nuances in this fragrance. You get the fresh peppery pink pepper. You get some warm spices uh, from the cardamom. Uh, you also pick up some woods in here as well. There's a gorgeous cedar wood in the dry down. So and surprisingly the, the citrus notes in the opening of the bergamot it really lasts throughout the lifetime of this fragrance I don't, I'm not sure how they did it there's also a lot of isoe super in this fragrance which is done very very well uh, isoe super on my skin comes across a nice like woody sort of cedar wood on my skin uh, performance wise lasts around seven to eight hours on my skin with moderate projection it's not a, a beastly sort of scent it sits closer to the skin it invites instead of attracts uh, this is one of the, the best signature fragrances out there. Uh, best worn to the office, I think. Ormond Man from the house of Ormond Jane, released in 2004. Okay, now moving on to 2005. Uh, this was a classic, which was originally created by, uh, was it Olivier Polge or Jacques Polge? I've got a relative here. Olivier Polge, which was the son of Jacques Polge. So this is Dior Homme. Um, so... This bottle here is the 2011 reformulation, but the DNA, original DNA, was created in 2005, which is why I've included it in this video. And the 2005 version came with the silver stem, which was created by Olivia Polge and later repackaged and re-released by Dior uh, using the in-house perfume uh, Francois de Machy. So, what can I say about this fragrance that hasn't been said so many times on YouTube? So released in 2005, as everyone knows, this opens up with beautiful, bright citruses, some lavender, and then it gets into the note of the iris, which is quite buttery, creamy, um, people and uh, quite waxy. Uh, people say that this smells like a makeup bag or a woman's purse. Um, as the fragrance dries down from the waxy, of the iris is also joined by cocoa which is so nice in this fragrance it's underappreciated the cocoa in the scent it really does make it and balances the the waxiness and powderiness of the iris uh, there's a touch of uh, woods in the dry down as well i pick up a little bit of uh, cedar wood as well ah, so classy when this was released in 2005 if you think about men's fragrances before then uh, they were quite masculine in how it f how it comes across. Um, even the eighties, the late eighties, men were wearing stuff like Fahrenheit. They were wearing Aqua Di Gio, 
they were wearing Lord de Porom, Dolce Gabbana Porom, uh, many fragrances in that sort of style that people were wearing into this decade. And then Christian Dior came out with something just completely different. They released a fragrance with, fragrance with the note of Iris in the masculine range. I think people were really surprised by that, but it worked so well. This is a masterpiece that really worked out. Many people consider this to be like a metrosexual scent, and it worked so well for that decade, the early, mid-2000s. This is when men were maybe more clean-shaved, they took a little bit better care of themselves, they weren't like this rugged, rough, lumberjack sort of man. Masculinity was seen in a different light. So say, for example, David Beckham. Uh, that's the sort of person that I would imagine wearing Dior Arm and metrosexual man. And it was a great fragrance for its time, uh, for masculinity of its time. And it still is, in my opinion, this is a great masculine fragrance, Dior Arm, which was released in 2005. Okay, now moving on to uh, a fragrance which was released in 2006. This one is called Black Orchid. So uh, this is from the house of Tom Ford. And I believe this is marketed solely to women, but I know a lot of men do enjoy wearing this one as well. So let me give this a uh, quick spray. I forgot to spoke about, speak about the performance of Dior Arm. On my skin, lasts really well, this formulation, around seven to eight hours of good uh, longevity. Projection is on the softer side, more moderate size side. It doesn't, uh, it's not a beastly scent. It doesn't push out massively, it stays closer to the skin, but for the style of perfume, I think it's fantastic. So moving back onto Tom Ford's Black Orchid, this is a scent which combines notes like chocolate, vanilla, patchouli, there's like a truffle note in here as well. This is a nighttime sort of scent. Uh, if you're going out to a black tie event, a woman wearing a black dress uh, to a formal event, this is the type of scent she would wear. It's very sexy, very alluring. Great performance on this as well. It lasts a very, very long time. It's gonna last you for your night out, your dinner, date possibly, and project really well. You are gonna get noticed with this one. Uh, that's Tom Ford's Black Orchid. Okay, moving on to another fragrance, which I think is very iconic for uh, this decade, which was released in 2006. It is obviously Ted Hermes. And the nose behind this fragrance is the master perfume Jean-Paul Guerlain, not Jean-Paul Guerlain. Sorry, uh, Jean-Claude Elena. I had to read it on my strip because uh, sometimes when you're shooting videos, your mind does go blank. So Jean-Claude Elena created this master uh, masterpiece of uh, fragrance. Uh, Jean-Claude Elena was also behind some other fragrances such as Declaration from the House of Cartier. So how does Tedema smell? Again, for me, this is a fragrance which just typic uh, typifies the 2000s for me. Uh, it sort of has a nostalgic sort of smell for me. Whenever I think about this, I think about all the good times I had in the 2000s. So released in 2006, again, a very popular fragrance, a darling of the early YouTube fragcom. Opens up with beautiful citruses. Uh, the main two citrus notes I get in the opening are the orange and the grapefruit. The grapefruit comes across quite sweet on my skin and the orange is there as well in the background. As the fragrance develops, the orange becomes more prominent and the grapefruit starts sitting in the background. And the heart of the fragrance is joined by a sort of a flint note. And as the fragrance develops, it's joined by a vetiver. Uh, the fragrance itself, like when I mentioned the orange, the dry down of this fragrance smells like a, a sort of a very ripe, nearly rotten orange that's on the ground and the ground is super baked. It's like clay and you're picking it up. Imagine the earthiness, the dryness and the smell of an orange, very ripe orange. That's the sort of smell. It's an, this fragrance is like an earthy, woody orange scent. <sighs> Superbly masculine in the modern sense. Uh, this one is a very versatile fragrance which can be worn year round, any season, any occasion as well. Work, fantastic. Really has that professional sort of aura. Um, it can be work, worn for a date, casual setting, night out, formal event, work, fragrance, everything. This is a Swiss army of ascent, a pure masterpiece created by Jean-Claude Elena. That's Ted Hermes from the house of Aramez. Okay, moving on to also 2006, this is a 
fragrance from the house of the niche brand Le Labo, and this one is called Rose 31. So this is one of my absolute favorite fragrances uh, as are others. Uh, this is a fragrance which when I wear this, it, it feels like this fragrance was created for my skin type. It matches uh, my skin so well. Uh, it's a pure signature fragrance for me. When I wear this, it doesn't feel like I'm wearing a perfume and the perfume is smelling good on me. It just feels like I'm smelling good, if that makes sense. Like I'm exuding a nice smell. Uh, it just fits to my skin like a glove. You know, it has that perfect sort of fit to my skin chemistry. So how does this smell? So Rose 31, it opens up with a blast of spiciness, fresh spiciness. The opening is quite strong on the spiciness, especially the note of cumin. A lot of people struggle with the note of cumin, especially in the Western world. Uh, I myself have no problems with the cumin notes. A lot of people mention that cumin comes across like uh, uh, smelling like body odor or sweat. I don't personally get that. I get a gorgeous sort of fresh spiciness. As the fragrance develops, this uh, the spiciness is now subdued and calmed by the notes of the rose. The rose adds a gorgeous fresh sort of sweetness or floral sweetness in the heart. And as the fragrance dries down, it's joined by a touch of vetiver and a gorgeous musk. And the musk works really well. Uh, along with the other notes like the rose and the cumin in the opening. Even though rose is mentioned in the note breakdown, I mean in the name of this fragrance, it's not an out and out rose scent in my opinion. It, the rose plays an equal part to the fresh spiciness of the cumin and also plays really well with the woodiness in the dry down along with the muskiness. A gorgeous woody floral musk. In terms of performance, it lasts around six hours on my skin with good projection uh, for the first couple of hours after which it sits closer to the skin. It's not a beastly scent, it sits a lot more closer to the skin. For me, this is like a signature scent and it's a perfect fragrance to wear to work for me. So that's Rose 31 from the house of Le Labo. Okay, moving on to the next fragrance. This one was released in 2007. It's from the iconic Middle Eastern brand of Ormand and this one is Jubilation 25 and the nose behind this fragrance was Bersh Bertrand du Chiffour. So this is not this is unlike any Middle Eastern brand I know a lot of Middle Eastern brands have a unique sort of DNA and they smell very very different to say the Western perfumery they're blended quite differently they have a different quality if that makes sense French perfume and this one they just have a different sort of quality um, this brand, Amouage, they use a lot of uh, Western perfumes to create their blends and they give them oriental notes to create them and I think it, it works really, really well. So how does Jubilation 25 work uh, and how does it smell? So opens up with this beautiful black currant note there's so much going on in this fragrance there's this fruitiness coming from the black currant there's some resins in here there's a popping axe there's uh, incense in here smokiness uh, there's oud in here a touch of oud as well it just blends so well together you get fruitiness you get uh, resinous you get some woodiness you get some oud it all combines together to create this very unique but very very opulent scent this is a, a scent which you would imagine a king wearing or a prince a sultan a sort of a king uh, or sultan in the middle east you know a king of oman would probably wear this one it's got that sort of feel this is best suited i think for a formal scent uh, but i actually used to wear jubilation 25 a lot at work i thought it fitted with uh, my personality and i think it could work as a signature fragrance for a certain someone. Uh, my wife absolutely loves this on my skin. She says that I do smell like a really rich person when I wear this. Uh, she says I smell like I should be in Dubai. So it gives off that rich prince sort of smell. In terms of performance on my skin, this is excellent. It lasts around 10 hours with good projection. Uh, it's not in the soft range, it's not in the beast range. It's more in the Godulux range, the good range. Um, a lot of people talk about reformulations, how the uh, the pearl cap, which I did have and I did review from, but I don't see too many uh, differences, not a massive, massive difference. They're very, very similar in terms of smell and performance as well. Uh, my older bottle did have a little bit more deepness, uh, but 
I don't maybe it's due to masqueration in the bottle. But that's Jubilation 25 from the house of Amawaj. So now moving on to a fragrance which was released in 2007. The original one which was released in 2007 and then re-released by Christian Dior in 2011. This is a, a Christian Dior's uh, Dior Homme Intense. So Dior Homme Intense is a flanker to Dior Homme. So this bottle here I have is the 2011 formulation, but the original bottle was created in 2007. I'd have tried both formulations. Both of them were created by the same perfume. Uh, I've got it written here, Francois de Machy, who was obviously the in-house perfumer at Christian Dior at that time. Uh, so I'm not too sure why there was a repackage or re-release in 2011. But 2007, I tried it. It was just had a little bit more vanilla in that one compared to the newer formulation. That was the only difference that I found. So Dolce, uh, Dior's Dior Homme Intense, how does it smell? Like the name suggests, it's a little bit more of an intense fragrance of Dior Homme. So this one is very rich and deep. It's got a lot more of the iris, in my opinion, and it's got a lot more of the cocoa. And there's a, an increased note of ambrette in here, which gives off a vanilla sort of scent. So imagine the original Dior Homme, but there's an increase in increase of a, a vanilla sort of smell. It's got an increased sweetness, a slight boozy sort of vanilla in this fragrance. This is a scent which is best worn, I think, during the nighttime. For formal events, this is really works really well as a date scent. It works really well as a night out fragrance. This works really well. This is a lot more playful than the original Dear Om. Dear Om Intense is more on the playful side. It's more on the fun side. It's like the the cousin that's a lot more fun or the younger brother that has a lot more fun. Whereas Dear Om is the older brother who's more of the professional, the classy sort of gentleman. So yeah, that's Dear Om Intense. Performance wise, excellent. 10 hours on my skin with strong projection works really, really well. That's Dior Homme Intense, released in 2007. Okay, next fragrance on the list is fragrance which was released in 2007 again. It's from the house of Guerlain. It's from their more uh, expensive or niche line, so to speak. And I'm not sure if my camera picks up, but this is Spirituals Double Veni. So if you're looking for a vanilla scent which has a booziness, then this is the one that you need to check out. I know that uh, Robes 08, uh, Mark, the fragrance guru, he loves this fragrance. And for good reasons, this is one of the best sort of boozy vanilla scents out there. So as the name suggests, there's vanilla in this. There's also some benzoin in here as well. Ah, the opening is like really strong on this booziness. It just smells like uh, vanilla mixed with like uh, these boozy notes that I don't drink. So I wouldn't know like say this bourbon, there's this uh, whiskey sort of smell. It's that sort of uh, vibe that this gives off. It gives off a boozy sort of vibe with the vanilla. The vanilla is so cozy in here. Uh, performance on my skin is very good. I get around seven hours of longevity with good projection. This is best suited for the winter colder months. It gives off that uh, sort of warm blanket sort of feel. That's uh, Guerlain Spirituals Double Veni. Okay, moving on, and this fragrance, I've only got a decant, unfortunately, and I wish I'd be able to buy a bottle, and it's from the house of Chanel, and this one is Sycamore, and this is the Eau de Toilette version. I know the newer stuff in the stores we have now is the Eau de Parfum version, but this was the original Eau de Toilette version. Um, if you've ever smelt Encre Noir's, uh, oh, sorry, Lalique's Encre Noir, and uh, these two fragrances are, fragrances are often compared, but for me, Sycamore is like on another level. It's this gorgeous, smoky, uh, vetiver scent. And Sycamore for me gives off a real professional sort of feel. Uh, so classy, so elegant. Um, I love wearing this one to work. So let me give this a quick spray. And the atomizer on this one is so strong. Ah, gorgeous sort of uh, fresh vetiver sort of opening as the fragrance develops it becomes a little bit earthy and smokier there's some juniper berries in here as well as well as some cypress creating a lovely green sort of fragrance which smells on my skin utterly masculine even though this one is uh, 
sort of marketed towards women for some reason vetiver always conjures up a masculine scent on my skin works really well as a work scent very very professional um i think it's a scent which i wish i could get a bottle of in my collection so that's sycamore from the house of chanel last on my skin really well uh, like i've mentioned seven hours with good projection it's not beastly but good projection uh works really well as a work scent gives off that professional sort of vibe Okay, now ending the video is a fragrance from the house of Christian Dior. It's from their Le Privé collection, and this one is Ambre Nuit. Uh, I couldn't find the perfume for this one, uh, but I've got the released year here, 2009 it was released. So how does this one smell? For me, this has two main notes of ambergris or amber and rose. The opening is quite bright. And quite fresh it has sort of like a, a citrus opening there's some warm spices maybe coming from like a pink pepper there's citrus and pink pepper along with a gorgeous sort of musky ambergris as the fragrance develops it's drawn by a rose a smooth sensual rose this fragrance smells very very sensual it's very alluring very very sexy in how it smells now a lot of youtubers talk about sexy fragrances but this one is generally a very sexy sort of scent longevity wise this lasts around six hours on my skin it's not the biggest performer and the projection is on the softer side so it is a softer sort of scent i think this works really well as a date fragrance it could work well as a signature scent as well you could wear this to work because it gives off a really clean sort of smell and because it doesn't project massively, I think it works well in an office environment. That's Amber Nui from the house of Christian Dior. So there you have it, guys. That was some of my favorite fragrances. Uh, some fragrances which I consider great to be uh, from the decade of the year 2000 or the 2000s or the noughties, as some people call it. Let me know what you thought of these fragrance selections. Were there any fragrances that I should have included in this uh, video? Please do let me know in the comment section below i love reading your comments guys i hope you've enjoyed this video next video is going to be the great fragrances of the decade of 2010s keep a lookout for that one until next time my friends see you later